Hi everyone, you can't see me, but um, I am um, make, have made this video to explain um, the universe as a whole. My story is dedicated to Miss Oprah Winfrey and dedicated to Mr. Stephen Hawking. And it's the story of creation. The real name of the story is Heaven and Earth, Adam and Eve. And thank you for listening. This is my first page. And it's about this. It's all about the hydrogen H1 hydrogen atom. As you know, it's the first universe, it's the first atom. So to me, that is a very important thing. Actually, it's the smallest thing, it's the smallest universe. So that's, um, that's how I want to begin. The atom is the universe. The H1 atom is the universe. So in there, you will find everything that the universe is and, and everything that the universe has. Now we'll go quickly to what is in there, but I will explain that a bit later. In the center, of course, lies the wonderful proton. And then I have the electron, which is here. Okay? And in the center proton, in the periphery, circling around the electron. Now between the proton and the electron, then we have electromagnetism, the minus and the pluses. We know that this universe has the plus on the inside and the minus on the outside. It's not the particles that get plus or minus, it's the spaces that the particles occupy that get plus and minus. Now, each of those colors and have also related to a sound. You have here the C, the B, the A, the G, this, the E and the D, and inside there is the F. Now, inside the color green and the, and, and the sound F is not part of the spectrum. You can see nicely the spectrum here from dark purple, indigo, blue, to red, to orange, to yellow. The top one I call the atomic universe, the bottom one I call the cellular universe. So this is the thing universe and this is the being universe, cells and atoms, and especially the H1 atom which is the smallest building block of all the things and the cell which is the smallest building block of all beings, and hence the below and above. Okay. So again, in there there's also some subcolors. You can see that here, subcolors, and those are uh, I will name everything as of now. The purple here is earth. The indigo here is water. The blue is air, and the three of them, as you can see here, make up the world. Now, when you die, there is a place for lost souls, and I will do that in another video. Come more to an explaining of that and there's a, a, a place for found souls. Okay, this is equated to the lower part in your abdomen, the intestinal and bladder. This is equated to the higher part of the abdomen, abdomen, the liver and the kidneys. And so when you move to the above, you have here the body, the red is the body, and body equates with earth because body is solid, bone and muscle, and the orange that is the soul because it relates to blood and water, and the spirit relates to air and light, the energy and water, and earth and matter. So earth and matter, water and energy, air and light. So in the middle lies the sun, and in the, in the, the sun of course lies outside of the world. You can see that it's separated, and it's separated by the zero because it has a beginning. An atom has a beginning, the universe has a beginning. And there's a one on the end here, right here, and it has an end, a destiny and a beginning origin. A one and a zero. And I will explain that a bit more what that is later. And the middle part relate to the below as being the sun and the earth and the water and the air, the four basic elements of life. And then the below part for the cellular part, which is the mesoderm, endoderm and the ectoderm, or the body and the soul and the spirit, it gives the image or the face, the image of the face. So this part is a very, very, very important part. Okay, so how does it all work? Well, I have explained the whole universe to the H1 atom. Now, I told you about the zero, the beginning of the atom. And you can see the zero lies between the plus and the minus, half minus, half plus, half plus in the middle, half minus on the outside. The electron is there for a negatively charged space, or it charges the space negatively. The proton charges the space positively and lies in the center. The electron right, right here lies in the periphery. 
And you see the electron goes to the cycle of colors, which we'll come later uh, um, back to. Now, we know that the H1 atom, a very simple atom, has one proton and one electron. Now, the H1 atom is, I call it the one full universe, has a proton and an electron. Now, the zero denotes a neutron. Now, what is actually a neutron? I can talk about it very long, but I, I, I'll, I'll tell you it's very simple. When the proton and electron become one and the same thing, and it's compressed together in such a way that there is no more space in between the atomic as well as subatomic parts, and it becomes black matter. So black matter here, the science has a word for that, it's called the neutron. So the neutron, you can see black matter and dark space. So the black matter and dark space get the little big bang, so that's kaboom. It creates, the neutron creates a proton and gives birth to the electron. Now here we get an interesting phase because the proton and electron also have an ending. They have a beginning, but it also must have an ending. So basically what this means is that the electron has to have become a white electron, because the proton is already white, and it spins so fast with the speed of white light that the matter has become zero. So it basically has become like the proton of white matter. So in here we have only time or eternity, which has a closed beginning. In here we have only space or infinity with an open ending. And in the middle we have the universe. So this is a knot, this is a knot, or this is the zero void, empty void. This is the one void or the full void. Full void, this is the one universe, because the zero universe is the cell. The one universe is what lies in between the two voids, has a proton and an electron. And the ending is what I call the zerotron, that's a new word, and the beginning is the neutron. So neutron, H1 atom, and zerotron. Now the zerotron is a very important part, and we'll come to that in a moment. We move back to the, to the bottom part. Now the proton, as you can see, and I was wondering about what the proton might look like, but since it's the smallest universe, you know that it has to set the model for the large universe, small universe, model large universe. So the proton has to look the same as the sun, and the electron is kind of the same as the earth. So I can conversely also talk about the sun and the earth instead of the proton and the electron. Now when I move down on the page here, you can see that the proton and sun is equatable, electron and earth is equatable. So what do I get here? I've made here a neutron star, and it's kind of funny, I, I, I I put it down as a leaflet, as a curtain, as a veil, because that's how it lies in the universe, like a black veil. And of course you can't see anything because it's dark, but I can't do that, otherwise you can't see it on the picture. But this is many neutrons together and it's, it looks like a pole or a penis. Now when it explodes, it expands with space, because this is only time, only matter, it's all compressed, and black matter. It explodes and it mixes with the dark space and it creates the sun. So the sun is the extreme, as I showed you earlier, the zerotron of the H1 atom. So basically what's inside the sun, you can see that here inside the sun, is H1 atom in its existence. Because H1 or hydrogen atom can only exist in supergas state. So inside the sun we have a supergas state. Now the protonic soup, of course, always stays centric because it doesn't move as fast. And the electronic soup is more on the periphery. So you can see the white, pure white matter is the proton. A little bit yellowish in it, you can't see that properly in your picture, is the e electronic soup. Now, this is the super gas state. So it's H1 atom in its pure existence. So basically, this is the super gas inside. Now, creation begins right, when you see this circle here, creation begins right here, because as soon as it leaves that circle, or i.e., this is super hot, or 5600K, here it's a bit cooler, and it starts to form already something that we can be familiar with, it's H2, because two hydrogen-1 atoms together form H2, or hydrogen gas, which is the yellow band here. Now, H3, or deuterium, sits there more on the outside, which is more yellow-orange, H4 helium gas sits more on the outside, which is more orangey. H5 is more reddish, it is the heavy helium uh, gas. And then the flames are nice and red. And you see all the higher colors, from red to orange to yellow to white, are inside the sun. The sun is, of course, of a higher nature than the earth, which we shall, we shall see later. So we started from the, the neutron star. The neutron star, of course, 
only attracts all the stuff in its surroundings. So I quickly tell you how that works. It sucks in all the debris, all the gases, all the nebulae, all the planets, all the comets, all the stuff that comes its way gets sucked into the black matter or the black pole. It's not a black hole, it's a black pole. This is a white hole, this is the black pole. Penis and vagina. So basically what happens is that when this explodes, the hydrogen one atom lies in the center and it moves to hydrogen gas and helium. And you know that the sun is a perpetual re reaction between hydrogen gas and helium and it keeps going like that. Okay? So basically this has a limit. So Beta, I have to uh, finish that. This has a limit because it keeps filling and it keeps filling and it keeps filling like when you put a seed in the womb of a woman. It, when it grows after nine months the womb says explode new baby universe is born. If it, this gets overfilled by itself perpetuating, but it gets overfilled, then all of a sudden also it reaches a maximum limit and boom, it explodes and expands with 1 to 10 to the 30th. So 10 times 10 times 10 till the 30th. That's how it expands. So it's huge. So you don't see that I drew it in the right way. Now here I've drawn the hydrogen 1 atom and the hydrogen one atom, I said, it can only exist in the super gas state, and that's why I drew it white. You, you won't be able to see the limits even, because it's all open, because it has reached infinity, because the beginning, the neutron, is eternity. There's only time. In the end, there's only space. What it means is the proton and the electron are one and the same thing. You can see the, the electron has reached the one limit, the maximum limit. If they both reach the zero limit, it becomes a neutron. If they both reach the one limit, then it becomes a zero tron. So both are now the same. So it becomes nice and white all through it. And that is H1 atom. It's called super gas. Now as soon as you pass this line, creation begins. Okay, so when super gas becomes a little bit colder, this is super hot, super gas. When it becomes a little bit colder, two of them combine together. And you see I'm, I'm drawing the two hydrogen atoms together. And of course, everything's created from hydrogen. Uh, one atom. So those are. this is hydrogen gas and you can see already in the green that's a little spine of the atom and you know that hydrogen gas has one electron in the center and there's one electron right here on the periphery that which goes around the two centers like a figure eight in a three-dimensional way. Now the inside electron is not sitting silent either. It's being shot forward back and forth to create that inferno because the proton is very much like on, uh, our sun. If we would go to the atomic level, on, on a subatomic level, you would see that if you were that small like the electron, this would be a huge sun, very hot, very big in comparison to the electron. Okay? So basically you can see all the notes here, the C, the B, the A, the G, all the notes, all the colors again. And this particular color in the middle, what happens is, when opposing colors meet, they become green. Now we know that yellow and blue make green. But also in light, not in colors, but in light, the orange and the, and, and the indigo make green, and the red and the purple make green. So whatever combination you have, you have three possibilities that the hydrogen atom can meet, it will become green, and that will become part of the spine of the atom, which gives it also a more a, a stronger bonding because it creates that spine. Now the next one is H4. You can see four of hydrogen atom have now combined in a certain way and each one of the fields has become green. So now you can see the big spine that it has now become and it becomes bigger and bigger as we, we create more of those. But those H1, H2 and H4 become important because those are the parts in the sun. Now, um, H1 is a building block as I said uh, earlier and then H2 and H4, hydrogen gas and helium become the buildings. But there will be much more